As the protests across the country to end lockdown and get back to work escalate, so too do the desperate attempts to portray these protesters not as the decent, honest, hardworking Americans that they are, but as quasi-violent, fringe Confederate Nazis. These folks are, let's be honest about what they are, they are the Fox News Nazi Confederate death cult rump of the Republican Party. And their very existence is a slap in the face, not only to the healthcare workers on the front lines risking their lives every single day, but it's also a slap into the face of the people who are actually dying from this virus in disproportionate numbers, black and brown people. Oh yeah, and don't forget that latter part too. They hate healthcare workers. In fact, the the only people they hate more than black people are nurses. And my God, if you're a black nurse, they'll execute you on the spot. That's the current narrative in the spin cycle, promoted through a few photos and videos of healthcare workers engaging with protesters, none more viral than this particular incident in Denver on Sunday, a man and a woman in scrubs blocking lockdown protester traffic and apparently taking heat for it. And look, criticize that lady's style all you want, but it doesn't erase her fundamental point. How free are we if we aren't free to pursue our own living? And isn't the state providing for you, rather than you providing for yourself, the hallmark of a communist system? And I know we're not a communist country, we're not anything close, but the questions she's asking about our value system are valid ones. Just how far will we go in betraying our own value system in pursuit of some questionable sense of safety? And just on a surface level, do these healthcare worker protests really make much sense? They're protesting others for not staying home and not social distancing by not staying home and not social distancing. If it's really so dangerous and risky to be out and about, Aren't these healthcare workers risking carrying the virus back to the very patients they claim to represent? You, of course, won't get that sort of question asked or answered by most of the coverage. Instead, you'll just get pure emotional appeal. Crazy Trump lady yells at stoic, heroic, stunning and brave healthcare workers. They took a stand, says NBC News. There were two of them. The male in the video is described as a nurse in this story, and in captions below, both he and his female companion are described as healthcare workers. CNN says exactly the same, just generic healthcare worker is the description provided. The New York Times as well. The original post of the video you just saw adds a more specific description. It says they are nurses who have witnessed firsthand Colorado's COVID toll. And a piece from People Magazine with six-figure views on YouTube adds similar detail. They are frontline. And just in case you forgot, they're healthcare workers. Frontline healthcare workers, medical personnel. Healthcare workers, healthcare workers. Yeah, okay, fine, I get it, but I assume there's some basis to say that they're frontline. I assume amid all of this repetition, someone actually verified who are these very legitimate healthcare workers and what very legitimate hospital are they from? <laughs> oh, well, uh, funny that they were... Uh, <clears throat> not identified. But according to a local reporter on the scene, they are from a Denver area hospital that they declined to specify where they're definitely treating COVID patients. And the reporter asked for their names, which they assuredly have. It's just they also declined to give those. Okay, well, what about the high quality, super dramatic professional photography? Surely that photographer must have verified the scene, right? It turns out no, because of course not. She just snapped a few photos and then happily sold the rights to them to pretty much every major news outlet, and they plastered those things everywhere, but nobody bothered to ask any questions. The photographer's name is Allison McLaren. She does freelance photography work in Denver. According to this interview with Time Magazine, she was asked directly if she's sure the people in her photos are actually healthcare workers, and she said, quote, I don't have any information on that, unfortunately. But I never got the feeling that they weren't. I believe that they were healthcare workers. What forms the basis of that belief? Just the fact that they were wearing the right costume? If so, it'd be just as reasonable to assume that the woman pictured on the Amazon page where anyone can buy it is also a healthcare worker. But we should probably ask some questions about that assumption too. And people are actually asking questions about the costume. Notice the scrubs are totally blank. No hospital insignia no identification markings, 
totally clean, pristine condition too, as though newly purchased. And notice the way they're wearing their masks. And granted, I'm not a stoic, heroic, stunning, and brave frontline healthcare worker, but it does seem odd that they're crisscrossing their mask ties against the recommendation of the Association for Professionals in Infection Control and Epidemiology Guidelines. Now, are wardrobe oddities themselves conclusive? No. But they are weird for someone whose supposed commitment to professionalism compels him to take a stand on behalf of his patients. Is choosing to remain anonymous itself conclusive? No, in fairness, there are many reasons a genuine healthcare worker protester might want to remain anonymous. Punishment at work, attack from political opponents, etc. But that doesn't mean that any decent journalist doesn't do the work to verify the authenticity of the person's identity and claims and then protect that identity as needed. There are ways to achieve both accuracy and source protection, but instead, in this case, we're just throwing one of these basic pieces of journalism totally out the window because it feels right. All of this on top of the incoherence and hypocrisy of saying these people protesting are putting people at risk, so you protest, presumably putting people at risk. Dig as I might. I haven't been able to verify that these supposed healthcare workers are in fact frauds, but all of these questions combined do point me in that direction. And it would appear that coverage of this incident is starting to look in that direction too. The phrase healthcare workers is stealthily morphing into people in scrubs. As of Monday afternoon, local Denver ABC described the guy as, quote, a man dressed as a healthcare worker in a Facebook post. Their television reporting was similarly careful to describe a costume rather than a profession. Powerful images today. Two people dressed in scrubs stopping protesters from getting to the Capitol building. Even BuzzFeed's Monday afternoon headline describes, quote, people in scrubs blocking anti-lockdown protesters, not nurses, not healthcare workers. And why? Because you gotta scroll down 20 plus paragraphs to read the acknowledgement that nobody knows who these people are. Not the photographer, though she's somehow confident calling them nurses, while simultaneously saying she has no idea, and not BuzzFeed, who's soliciting the identity of these people in big, bold font mid-story. If even Pissgate BuzzFeed is being this cautious, you know the claims are extremely flimsy. And whether that's by accident or by design, the facts are largely lost and largely irrelevant at this point. The imagery is what's useful to manipulate people. Not the finer details of whether the image actually shows what is claimed. You don't want to be the bad guy, do you? Don't be the bad guy. Just listen to the healthcare professionals and stay home. Well, hang on. Are those even healthcare professionals? Shut up. What did I just say about being the bad guy? Some reporting even compares these photos to the famous one of the protester in front of the tank at Tiananmen Square in China in 1989. Ironic, considering this is a photo of a real fight against authoritarianism. And this is a photo of an almost certainly fake fight for authoritarianism. Sure, both images show a guy standing defiantly in front of a vehicle, but they couldn't be more directly opposed in their aims. Doesn't matter. Just look at the picture. Just feel the emotion. Ask for facts and evidence later. Think critically later. Better yet, don't do that at all. Journalism used to be about the who, what, when, where, why, and how. In this case, it's about none of that. It's just about a photo that was shot to make you feel a certain way by a photographer who feels that it's accurate. That is not a standard for news. That is a standard for propaganda. Thanks, as always, for listening and for supporting this channel always. Appreciate that thoughtful discussion down below and especially over on Twitter. That is at ML Christensen. You're always welcome to coming out and chatting my live streams. Those are linked down in the description. Looking forward to it. Goodbye.